Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and Fertility Courses. Uh, I'm just completing a talk to patients, so the commonest question which was asked is about luteal phase defect. Now, I'll tell you where my thinking of luteal phase defect comes from, and I'll tell you an easy way of trying to understand how you treat a luteal phase defect. Now, one well, of the first thing that you we often forget is to ask about the menstrual cycle. And why is it important? Now, have a, have a think of it. When you, whenever you take history, you will uh, look at this and say, well, uh, there's a 28 day cycle or, or a 27 day cycle or uh, a 30 day or a 32 day cycle. And so what is the deficiency there? And the deficiency there to a certain extent is often the history and the symptoms are going to tell you how the cycle is planning out. Now, remember the first half of the cycle is estrogen based. The second half of the cycle is progesterone based. So, and what in the center comes through is ovulation. So if you are uh, heading towards trying to find out what is going wrong here, I, I think you have to step back and say, well, is there a, a, a role of uh, an ovulatory problem? And is that ovulatory problem coming up in the follicular phase or is it coming up in the luteal phase? So for example, let's see somebody has a 23 day cycle. And if somebody has a 20, uh, I'll try and uh, share a screen and be able to uh, do it much better. So uh, somebody has a, uh, 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 let's say a, a, a 20 uh, three day cycle. So yeah, I've got, so, so uh, have a look at this uh, 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 theory. So you, you've got um, a 23 day cycle. So let's say bleeding starts here and you've got a bleeding for about five days. And then you have ovulation that occurs, let's say on day 14. Now, the crucial thing to remember is that if you see spotting occurring in, in the first five to 10 days of the cycle, what is happening? It's happening because one is that estrogen levels are not climbing up. So deficiency of estrogen is often accompanied by early menstrual spotting, which means after the menstrual cycle or through the menstrual cycle, it peters down slowly and steadily to create an endometrium that develops slowly. Again, this happens in longer cycles. Again, very common in polycystic ovaries and poor responders. So what you're effectively seeing is you're effectively seeing that the ovary is building up this estrogen and it's taking a longer time to build up the estrogen. Now, and that's the reason why as estrogen rises, and again, remember, estrogen comes from granular cells and women who have low granular cells, which again are older women, tend to raise their estrogen slower and that will give rise to an endometrium developing slower. Now, how do we correct that? You correct that is by increasing estrogen levels faster. So in the first five days, how do you increase estrogen levels? You increase estrogen levels by giving FSH, clomiphene, and both of these, what they do is they cause multifollicular growth, and that increases your estrogen levels. And that's a simple way of correcting it. Second is if you, let me clear this, if you have a look at the follicular phase, what you want to know is what is the length of the follicular phase? Now, usually in, as women are younger, they tend to have a follicular phase that ranges between 12 to 16 days. Now, what tends to happen? So that is a normal follicular phase. As women age, remember, AMH levels start going down and as AMH levels start going down, follicles are more easily released into the antral follicle zone 
and multiple follicles may also get recruited in nature. And also what happens is at AMS declines, the variable FSH that is, is coming, and that's the FSH, recruits follicles faster. So what do you see? You see a decline and a, a reduction in the follicular phase. And again, that is the first sign. So what do you notice? You notice that follicles are developing faster and there's no cure for it. It just is an, an indication. So equally what is important is when does, what happens to the luteal phase? So let's say ovulation, I, I, let's clear this again. Let's say ovulation happens. And there is an LH surge. And the, and, the, and the progesterone rise tends to happen. And the progesterone rises at its peak seven days after ovulation. So when could the progesterone level? So let's go back to this and say, when is it that the luteal phase is disrupted? The luteal phase is disrupted when you have a low progesterone level. So where does the problem lie? The problem could lie one, on a lower amplitude of LH. Where does it happen? Polycystic ovaries, poor responders, low AMH, older age women. And in all those cases, you end up seeing that the ovary is recruiting follicles which are older or where there's polycystic ovaries, where the LH amplitude is limited. And as soon as the LH amplitude gets limited, you are going to see a lower rise of progesterone. Why? Because less cells get luteinized and your progesterone levels are lower. Now, often it, people say, how, how do I know that? And I'll say, one is, remember the luteal phase tells us more about the follicular phase. If the follicular phase is poor, which means that follicular recruitment is poor, quality of eggs is poor, you're going to get a poor luteal phase. So you have to be very clear and say, well, is a luteal phase dysfunction only of the luteal phase? No, much of it also starts in the follicular phase. So correction of the follicular phase may also help luteal phase dysfunction. So sometimes when women say, yes, I have a period, so, Let's look at this and we'll say uh, a, a woman has uh, a period and then What, what you're seeing is you're seeing let's take this away. So she has a period. Ovulation happens, let's say day 14. And then around day 23, you start seeing spotting. So have a look at it seven days after, L progesterone is high and spotting occurs. Now spotting in the second phase is almost certainly progesterone deficiency. Where did it arise? Again, three suspicions. One, does it arise in the egg, which means poor egg quality. One way to correct it is to stimulate the ovaries and see whether that gives you a high progesterone. Second, does it occur in the LH amplitude? Third, does it occur in the progesterone, which is linked to the LH amplitude, is linked to the follicular rise and follicular uh, luteinization, and finally to the endometrium. So when you give progesterone suppositories to a luteal phase defect, what are you doing? You're not treating the follicular phase, you're not treating the LH amplitude, and you, you, you're not treating the progesterone secretion. What you're doing is you're substituting and you're doing an endometrial treatment. 
So what is my approach? And my approach is first we say, why don't we try more follicles? More estrogen, more luteinization. Why don't we give a trigger of HCG? I tend to use 5,000. Why? Because 5,000 is enough. Also remember that HCG is in the system for seven to 10 days. And third is increase the LH level, which means the LH rise, not the amplitude. Remember, the LH goes as a plateau. 24 hour is the amplitude of LH. So what you're aiming to do is you are aiming to give a rise of, of LH by giving an analog trigger. So what does the analog trigger do? It gives you a bigger spike of LH, shorter amplitude with bigger spike. So by combining these, you have an ability to increase the LH amplitude. So you, one, increase the number of follicles, increase LH spike, and you give sustained LH with HCG. So what happens in nature? Think about it. In nature, ovulation happens, progesterone rises plus day seven, and then the progesterone level starts declining. So what saves the corpus luteum from death? A pregnancy. So when there's a, a pregnancy in the endometrium, it secretes HCG and the progesterone keeps rising. So what saves the corpus luteum? is HCG, and that's an ongoing pregnancy. So if you were to say, I want to try and have a, a luteal phase defect corrected, I'll say the easiest step one is day seven or day six after ovulation, add HCG. So what you're doing is you're prolonging the life of the corpus luteum. If you prolong the life of the corpus luteum and spotting stops, which means you're corrected a corpus luteum problem. If spotting continues, then to a cer certain extent you are treating the corpus luteum, but it's not working. And then giving progesterone may be useful. But what it still does not treat, it does not treat follicular phase. If you've got poor quality eggs, if the eggs are recruited poorly, if the follicles have grown poorly, then there is more likely to be a luteal phase defect. And that defect is very much caused by a defective follicular phase. So that's in short about understanding how uh, luteal phase and, for, uh, and understanding how your menstrual cycle works, understanding how a uh, luteal phase and follicular phase functions work and understanding how, the, uh, how to, un to come to a conclusion where the follicular phase is starting, how to understand it, how to correct it. Look at the amplitude of LH and we understand its link to progesterone increase and then try and see how you can prolong the life of the corpus luteum. So thank you very much. And those of you who will be attending the course will be welcome for this extensive discussion that we'll, we'll do in those four days.